were late to win. Well, Lake Catholic in the last two ball games has just given up six points, so you can tell that they've been doing it defensively all season long. You look at Columbus DeSales, and you saw the catch by Dwayne Penn to really give Columbus DeSales, who got into the playoffs with a 5-5 five and five record, a chance for a state championship at the Division Three level. It should be a great contest, and I know everyone down on the field for the DeSales team is thinking that this could be their magical season. The opening kickoff comes up next to the Division Three state championship game. Under head coach Bob Jacoby, they're making their sixth championship game appearance here today at Maslin Paul Brown Tiger Stadium to get you ready for the kickoff here this afternoon. Mender Lake Catholic won the toss, elected to receive. The sales will kick the football away. The Stallions at nine and five, and uh, to call them a Cinderella, I think a lot of people have talked about that, Ryan Miller, but uh, a Cinderella, uh, this is certainly a date that deserved the invitation to the ball. Definitely, they've been battle tested too. They've played teams from a couple of different states, and they've played some Division I teams throughout the course of the regular season. That explains the five and five record, but right now they're just playing their best football. Stallions get ready to kick it away. John Bednarik will kick it away for the Stallions. Back deep for Mender Lake Catholic as Stallions try a little game and ship right away before the opening kick. Mark Watson and Matt Matucci are back deep for Mender Lake Catholic. The first of the state championship games, the Division III title game, is underway as Bednarik sends it back into the end zone and it will go into and out of the end zone and Mender Lake Catholic will start on offense. First down and 10 at their own 20-yard line. Guy's a little pumped up. You know, it's funny, Marty, the, the clouds kind of parted there for a second. The sun came out at the, to start the game to kick it off. That's what that was? <laughs> Did you see that? <laughs> yeah, I saw that out there. Lots of rain, lots of wind, and very cold conditions. In fact, earlier this morning, uh, in fact, moments before kickoff, it was to, to say miserable would be a, 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 a very good term to use. Yeah, it was uh, just brutal weather conditions. Better Lake Catholic will have the football to start. The Cougars under head coach Tom Lombardo are coming into this game at 12 and 2 led by this young man mark petruzzolo the head the uh, quarterback first team all ohio performer look at his numbers you see the 13 touchdown passes the 10 interceptions but keep in mind in the playoffs he's completing 65 percent of his passes that's where he's really taking charge well he, he's completed so many percentage of his passes 13 for touchdowns he also does it on the ground he's got 32 touchdowns overall he's rushed for 19 marty mark petruzzolo the quarterback for the mentor late catholic cougars who will come on offense First down and 10, the first play of this Division III state championship game. Petrozulo, a six foot, 180 pound sophomore, and he will keep and find very short running room to the left side of the Mentor Lake Catholic offensive line. Mentor Lake Catholic on offense. Get a look at the Cougars starting lineup there. We talked about Petrozulo, the quarterback, Dan Savalbar is their leading rusher at over 1,100 yards a game, second leading rusher, I should say, behind Petrozulo at quarterback. Mike Gibbons, their top linebacker, also a pretty good blocking back at the defensive uh, or on the offense. And the offensive line, Mike uh, Matt Mezzacapa, John Dolce, Jeff Lupica, Kevin Powers, and Doug Kastner, a good group up front. Second down handoff, and this is Savelbar with a little running room, and more than that, out across the 30, and a first down for Metter Lake Catholic. It's all done up front there, Marty. You, you watched that offensive line you just talked about, and they did a great job there. The DeSales defense that will try and slow down this Metter Lake Catholic offense. Blake McAllister, Mark Wilson, Ryan O'Reilly, Kevin Randolph, Scott Wintering, a second team All-Ohio choice across the front for DeSales. Dan Brown along with Dwayne Penn and Andrew Addington, the linebackers, Angelo Cua, Ronnie Smith, and Marty Cahill all will see time at the defensive back spots for the Columbus DeSales Stallions. First down and 10 for Mentor Lake Catholic. Game is a minute old. And the ball popped loose on the quarterback center exchange. Jeff Lupica in the center and Petrozulo the quarterback. It almost looked as if uh, the quarterback was trying to get his offense set there. And Maybe a little miscommunication. Uh, the ball being snapped, not on time. You see it here. Just kind of not on the same page. He's kind of backing up. And uh, luckily for Lake, they got the ball back, and it's going to put him in a second long situation. Jeff Lupica, the center, 5'11", 190-pound senior. It's not an extremely big offensive line, save for left tackle Matt Mezzacapa, who's 6'7", 320. A second down and 12 call into the sales defense. Reed Savelbar as he starts into the hole. That's Scott Wintering, who uh, did a good job for DeSales. He was the second team All-Ohio in Division Three, and he steps up and uh, makes a big play. If you watch him right here, kind of just going up underneath, taking on the blocker, and then wrapping up the ball carrier. That's a great job keeping a hand free and getting underneath that blocker. On the ground. Yeah, you like that? Reaching out, making the tackle. So the first third down of the afternoon, Better Lake Catholic, a third and 13. 
Petruzzullo wants to throw, being harassed, and finds Mark Watson to the near side. Watson still on to go at the 40, and he has a first down and more into the sales territory before he's thrown out of bounds. Mark Watson with the reception. 23-yard pickup and a first down for Better Lake Catholic. Well, that's exactly what they needed. They just threw the little hitch route. Watch Doug Kastner. He's the right tackle. You see him in your screen here. He's going to just take a beeline for the defensive back for the sales and knocks him down. Does a great job there. Ronnie Smith kind of got... Uh, kind of got uh, pancake there in that play, Marty. But you see the play again. Nice pressure by DeSales. It was really just a real quick uh, quick little route by Watson. And he uh, stays on his feet and picks up the first down for Lake. Keeps the chains moving. Mark Watson, a guy the head coach Tom Lombardo said would have been an All-State performer had he not suffered a knee injury this season. The running game finding trouble for Better Lake Cat against the Sales. Has done a nice job early on against the Cougar ground attack. Short game there Back for the Better Lake Catholic. And coming up to make the stop and Josh for... Columbus to sales that time was Addington. Austin Addington and a second down call coming and again the running game uh, not doing much for Tom Lombardo's Center Lake Catholic Cougars here early on in this game in his third season 27 to 9 is his mark. Petrozulo bounces off the pile and tries to sweep it to the outside. The great pursuit, Ronnie Smith angles him down. Great job by Ronnie Smith. Ronnie Smith's the same player that, remember, he got knocked down before and let up the first down when it was third and long, this time doing a great job in contain. And you're going to see Petrozillo go ahead, and he kind of gets hit here, keeps his feet. But Ronnie Smith isn't having any of that. He's going to go ahead and take him down for a loss and force now Lake to try to come up with something crazy again on third and long. Third down and 14 for Metro Lake Catholic. And to this part of the game, the, the sales defense has done a very nice job against the ground attack of Metro Lake Catholic. They were able to convert on third along and a moment ago, see if they can do it on this third down situation. Shotgun and Petrozulo is looking to throw. Airborne and the pass is intercepted. Ronnie Smith takes the ball away for Columbus to sales. He's starting back up field and has finally dropped. And the DeSales Stallions come away with a big break early on in the game. Exactly. Ronnie Smith, the guy we just talked about, who kind of got burned on the first third down play. He comes up, makes a big uh, play on that second down of an attack for a loss. And now he comes up here with this huge interception. This is what the games are, this is what makes or breaks games are the turnovers. When you come to a big state championship game like this, and Ronnie Smith knows that that's going to be a big shot in the arm for this offense now that comes and goes ahead and gets the ball back. Fifth interception of the season for Ronnie Smith and a nice return of 13. And Columbus DeSales will put its offense onto the field. Dino Rosano, the quarterback, six foot two, 190 pound junior. There you see Ronnie Smith with the team high fifth interception. Rosano, a run pass threat. Over a thousand yards in each category. You know, Smith's only a sophomore here, so uh, for him to go out there, there's seven seniors on that defense that started three sophomores today. And, uh, you know, Ronnie Smith, one of the sophomores, the super sophomores. There you see the numbers on Dino Rosano, the passing numbers on Rosano. Seven touchdown passes. A dangerous threat running the football as well, too. There was. A penalty after the play. They grabbed his face mask. They gra right. grabbed Ronnie Smith's face mask, so now they're just marking it off. The officials are kind of straightening things out, and this is going to be the sales' first touch of the football. Five-yard inadvertent face mask. The ball out to the 46, and that's where the sales starts. First down and 10. Dwayne Penn, Luther Henderson, John Schmall, Andrew Addington, Mark Wilson, Tyler Gurgley will all see time out of the triple option. Penn starts in motion and a flag comes in as we had movement on the left side of the DeSales line. Yeah, I think this is what everyone's looking forward to, this offense for DeSales against the, the great defense for Lake Catholic. Let's take a look at that DeSales offense. Dino Rosano, Luther Henderson, Dwayne Penn for Penn, his second straight 1,000-yard plus season running the football for the DeSales Stallions. Pretty good offensive line led by left tackle Andy Wills, a first-team All-Ohio performer at the left tackle spot. 6'3", 280-pound senior Andy Willis. Andy Wills and the sales back five to the 41. Rosano goes inside this time on the inside hitter. That was Gurgley on the short game. The defense for Metro Lake Catholic that will try and slow down this triple option. There you see the front four for Metro Lake Catholic. John Dolce, one of the standouts up front, six foot, 220 pound junior. Mike Gibbons at one of those inside linebacker spots. Despite the fact he's 5'8", a buck 65, he was the defensive player of the year in the state of Ohio. Shared that honor with some pretty good linebackers, Mike Kudla and Van Wert's Joel Penton. 
and solid defensive backs as well. Here's Dwayne Penn making catch and breaking free for DeSales to the far side sideline. Penn has running room, and he is at the 10, at the 5, and DeSales takes the lead. Well, he's Mr. Everything. We talked about him at the start of the show. I can't ex ex express to you enough how important it is for the, in the passing game in a wet field like this to maybe get complete your first pass early. And how about completing your first one for a touchdown? That's got to make you feel pretty good. 55 yards, and DeSales takes the lead at 6 to nothing. Dwayne Penn on the touchdown pass from Dino Rosano, the eighth of the season. Watch Penn run away from defenders here. Well, take a look. It's not too difficult of a pass. It's a quick pop pass, and he's lined up at a sl as a slot right there. And then he, here he is just, this is all Penn. Penn does the rest. He gets to the sideline, has a speed to get it into the end zone. Much easier than his last touchdown reception that we showed you earlier when he wrestled the ball away from a defender in the Kettering Alder game. The extra point attempt is up and good, and DeSales has a 7 to nothing advantage. The Stallions take the lead on the 55-yard touchdown pass to Dwayne Penn. You know, we talked about Penn all season long. 16 touchdowns. This is now his 17th touchdown. And, you know, I, I thought we were going to see him run a little bit more before he got into the end zone, but to take his first reception and take it 55 yards for the score. And it was all set up by the defense. Remember, Ronnie Smith with the big uh, interception. And now, of course, two plays, 59 yards in 42 seconds. I like the proficiency uh, if you're the sales coach at about, about this time. No question. The 55-yard scoring pass from Rosano to Penn. And the advantage for Columbus to sales. Tom Lombardo, the head coach of Metter Lake Catholic, talked about his defense, and it's an aggressive run-to-the-ball type of defense, but that time the ball ran away from him. Almost caught him off guard. It almost seemed like uh, Lake Catholic was waiting for that option again. The, the triple option, you got to be patient, and I understand that, but I think they were waiting on the triple option and maybe got caught off guard with a little quick pass. Well, that's the danger of uh, going up against an attack like that. If you haven't seen it, the scout team that you run during the week of practice cannot duplicate what that will do, and if you're making the ground game go, the pass game becomes just that more effective. No doubt about it. There's no scout team in high school that's going to go ahead and simulate what the sales does as far as their triple option, and and Lake Catholic's going to have to be here all afternoon and going to watch this uh, this option up close and personal. Hey, one thing about the sales, they played teams that are just as good, if not better, than Lake Catholic, so I'm not sure if they're that intimidated by, by Catholic's defense. John Bednarik will get ready to kick it away. Again, they tried to fool Lake Catholic into thinking they were going to onside it. And Bednarik will clear it away. Last time he kicked it into the end zone. This one will be fielded by Matucci at the goal line. Matucci with a nice return out to the 15-yard line, and that's where Lake Catholic will start on offense. Columbus to Sales has the advantage over Lake Catholic by the score of 7-0. Championship game here at Paul Brown Tiger Stadium in Maslin. Marty Bannister, Ryan Miller, great to have you with us here on the Ohio News Network as Metro Lake Catholic's Mark Perzuza, the quarterback, spins to the near side. A nice run. He's still on to go to the 40 and his <laughs> bounce to the near side. Petrozillo with a nice run that time. Petrozillo, he's done this all season long. He's rushed for over a thousand yards, and they just call his number. They're going to split everybody out, give him some width, and then he's just going to take the snap and he's going to follow number 20. He's going to follow him, Dan Sel Selbar, right up the middle, and he just kind of outruns everybody, keeps his feet, and stays on the sideline. Nice big chunk there in first down. Pretty good athlete. Petrozillo, the sophomore, first team all Ohio selection at quarterback. You saw his rushing numbers, they're very impressive. So Belbar with very little running room in the middle that time. That's the DeSales defense stepping up once again. Looked like that time Dan Brown stepped up, the big senior, six foot, 200 pounds. That's what you need out of a linebacker, kind of stepping up, finding a hole, and then wrapping up and bringing the, the, the ball carrier to the ground. Josh Nesser. Six foot, 190 pounds. So he's one of the first to sail stallions to greet Belbar as he started into the hole. Second down and nine, and Petrozillo again to throw in the pass to the near side. Falls short of Brandon Savage, the intended receiver. Brandon Savage almost looks like he's got he got shook up on the play. You know, you look at that uh, that play there. It, it almost seemed as if uh, a couple of the sail stallions. Kind of turn your turn your head around. You might get a uh, might get a second pick of the game. That was Josh Nesser who had his back to the play that time. Watching Brandon Savage get up slowly after that play. He's in place of Mike Vidmar at that tight end spot for Metro Lake Catholic. Vidmar injured his knee last week before the semifinal in the pregame warmups. Third down and nine, and Petrozulo again will look to throw. Tries to set up a little screen. Watson and again to sales with great. 
defense that time, and the ball hawking stallion defense finds the ball carrier, and again, Metro Lake Catholic will be forced into a fourth down situation. Almost, almost a shame for Watson because if he gets past Ryan O'Reilly, he's got some daylight. He had some running room. They did a great job setting up the screen. Problem was, Ryan O'Reilly wasn't fooled, and he holds onto the ankle and brings him down, forces Lake now to punt. Brandon Savage on to kick it away. Savage. Not much of a rush at all, and a pretty good kick by Savage. And fielding it forward to sales, Jason Meyer, and he goes down after a 37-yard punt and a short return, and the DeSales offense, which found the end zone in just two plays a moment ago, comes back onto the field. Of course, I think this is going to be Mr. Ohio here, Defensive Player of the Year, Gibbons. He's all over the field. You're going to see him on offense, defense, special teams. He's every coach's dream. I know he's not that big, 5'8", 165 pounds, but he's just a pure football player. First down and 10 for DeSales, their own 26-yard line. Good coverage on the punt by Metter Lake Catholic. And this is Rosano, the quarterback, to the far side. And a first down for DeSales as Rosano carries out across the 40 to the 41. A 15-yard pickup and another first down for DeSales. The triple option, like, like we talked about, it's so hard to go ahead and get a good look during the week. You can watch all the films you want, but until you actually see it up close and personal, it's tough. And Rosano... He really runs the triple option very well, and I think uh, Coach Jacoby really knows that. Rosano with some big games rushing this year. 145 yards against Painesville Riverside, 110 yards against Ironton, and that's a tough defense to run against. And Tyler Gurgley lined up as the fullback with a short carry out to the 44-yard line. DeSales coming into the postseason at 5-5, five and, five and they certainly were the story, one of the two stories going into the postseason. The other had to have been oh, Kyle Oga Falls, Walsh Jesuit, which went in with a losing record. They were one and done, but the sales is playing for the state championship today. And with a win today, they would win as many games in the postseason as they did in the regular season. Here's Rosano on the option. Better Lake Catholic territory and up first down to the stallion. Rosano again, we talked about him going over a thousand yards so far this season. And looks uh They've, they've gone ahead and outscored their opponents, believe it or not, 107 to 52. So you talk about getting in with a five and five record, but still, they're a very good football team that can put points up on the board and the, their defense can fly around and really make some plays as well. Third first down for DeSales. Bob Jacoby looking on from the DeSales sideline. Dwayne Penn starts in motion. They go inside again to Gurgley. And from the 44, Gurgley a couple to the 42-yard line. Talked about the numbers by Dwayne Penn and some of the big numbers he's put up this season, and certainly they are impressive, but a pretty good balance the rest of the way around for DeSales on offense. You looked at Gurgley's numbers a moment ago. Yeah, he picks up five yards of carry. They pick it up in chunks. And Absolutely. It, you know, a lot of times people are going to talk about Gurgley. They'll talk about Penn, Rosano. That offensive line does a great job. Second down and eight. Penn starts in motion, and again, DeSales goes inside. Now this is just line them up and try to knock off Lake off the football and try to fall forward and get a few yards, and they've been successful doing it thus far. Uh, now, now you're getting to a questionable call here. It's about third and five. Early on, the only time we've seen Penn touch the ball was on that pass reception. They've been running the ball inside a lot, and Rosano's been keeping, keeping it. the ball. You're moving it without him. You keep doing it, and then you uh, give them a healthy taste of Dwayne Penn. Uh, part of the game plan for the sales. Here's, Here's his first Penn. rushing touch of the afternoon. And Five running room, shy of the first down for Dwayne Penn. 5'11", 215-pound senior. You see Lake Catholic, everyone talks about their quick defense. I know that they were probably keening on Penn here. Just got to get in his way. He, can, he almost lowered the shoulder and, and ran over uh, ran over one of, the, one of the Cougar tacklers. So on fourth down and short, the sales will punt. Scott Wintering on to kick it away. Lake's in a safe punt formation because this is really in the territory where, where the sales could call a fake. 33-yard average for Wintering. Matt Matucci waits back for Lake Catholic, and it is just that. 
and the pass is caught, and it is good enough for a first down. Wintering almost just shot put the ball ahead to the receiver yeah. that time, Tyler Gurgley, and a first down for DeSales. He almost could smell it up here in the press box uh, <laughs> that the fake was coming. And, you know, I think Lake Catholic knew about it too, but you watch, they take the snap, and it looks as if uh, he's going to run. You see Gibbons has a beat on him, but all he has to do is, like you said, throw the little shot put, complete the pass, and move the chains for the first down. A great job right there. Wintering with the pass completion and a first down for DeSales. As we near the two and a half minute mark of this first period, DeSales is up seven to nothing. The Division Three State Championship game. DeSales members of the Central Catholic League in the Columbus area. Better Lake Catholic from the North Coast League. And again, Tyler Gurgley just keeping the ball in the middle of the field. They get inside the 30. Just kind of falling forward. That up, that big offensive line for Columbus to sales right now averages about 236 pounds across the front. But what they do is they do a good job of being quick off the ball. And they've done a great job so far just knocking Lake off the front and falling forward for two, three yards of play. A look at Dino Rosano, junior quarterback. And again, he turns it upfield. Across the 20. Rosano's having a great game so far early on, and he's calling his own number. He keeps the he make, does a great job selling the fake, pulls it out, and then finds a hole. Matt Matucci, the quarter, cornerback, and Ray Catania. And it's Catania back there as well. And on the stop for Better Lake Catholic. Catania, 5'7, 145 pound senior. And the clock is stopped with 153 remaining here in this first period. A timeout called by Mentor Lake Catholic. Trying to stop the insanity here. It looks like DeSales is kind of having their way. Lengthy drive by DeSales. Ryan, they're eating up clock, and they're keeping the Mentor Lake Catholic offense off the field. Anytime you can do that, and, you, and plus you're keeping your defense fresh, and, and I know that Bob Jacoby really has got to be pleased with the way the game's going, gone thus far. Tom Lombardo, on the other hand, he's calling the timeout to say, guys, come on, let's, let's try to relax here. I know everyone's got some nervous, maybe some pent-up, uh, energy right now because of the fact that this is such a big game for these seniors and these players on this football team. Well, we talked a moment ago about defending this triple option, and it's a type of an offense where if you haven't seen it, it may take you a quarter to get adjusted, maybe a quarter and a half. The the, the, the goal is, though, is by the time you get to that point of the game, you don't want to be out of it. Well, that, that's the point. Tom Lombardo said before the game, it might take him the whole half to go ahead and adjust to what the sales is doing offensively. Problem is, by halftime, you're right. You don't want to be out of this football game, and that's why I think he's, he's saying, you know what, defense at this timeout, we can bend a little bit. Let's just not break. Let's not let them across this goal line. And here they are now, first and 10 inside the 20 in the red zone. They got to step up, bow up a little bit, and be tough and fly around like they've done all season long. You got to remember, this defense for Lake Catholics got five shutouts on the year. They're only giving up nine, uh, less than nine and a half points a game. First down and 10 at the Lake Catholic 18 yard line. And again, it's Tyler Gurgley with the carry for. To sales. The 15 yard line. Well, the sales offensive line continues to just line up and, and do what they've been doing. They're just kind of pounding them. This is old school. It's kind of kind of fitting. We're playing this game in mass and some old school football we're watching right now. Just line them up, knock them off the ball, and try to fall forward for three, four yards. Russell Dolce in on the stop on that last play for Better Lake Catholic. 5'8", 170 pounds. See, the linebackers all around that 5'8", 5'9", 5'10". 170, 190 pound range for Better Lake Catholic. Not exceptionally big, but exceptionally fast. And again, it's Rosanna with the option toss. Ken bobbles it and covers it and did pick up a couple of yards. You see how long Rosanna kept that ball in the belly of the fullback? And this is the way for, for young quarterbacks out there, if they want to see how to run an option, watch Rosanna. I mean, that's 1,002, 1,003, and then he finally pulls it out. And then uh, maybe that's why the pitch wasn't as good to Penn, but Penn did a good job of just sticking with it, falling on the football, and they ended up gaining about four yards on the play. Third down and three, call up coming. Columbus to sales, save for the touchdown pass. He's done the, done the majority of the damage on the ground here early on, and it's Rosano turning it up inside the five to the three. Ooh, that was a touchdown saving tackle right there. Number 56, Phil Polito. Really, I mean, he doesn't go ahead and shoestring tackle there, and, and Rosano's gonna be in the end zone, but again, Calling his own number. They must have seen something this week in films that said Rosano was going to get a quite a bit of yardage uh, against this late Catholic defense. Eight carries, 45 yards, or four carries, I should say, and 45 yards for Rosano. And it's a first and goal now for Columbus to Sales. 
13th play of the drive upcoming. Is it a lucky 13? It is. Touchdown. Tyler Gurley into the end zone Tyler. for the score. Tyler Gurley, he's been the workhorse. He's sure the guy has. that's just been kind of riding, getting three and four yards in a cloud of dust, well, a cloud of mud here, or, or, or rain on this turf. And you're going to watch him again one more time. You're going to see Rosano. He kind of just gives it to Gurley, kind of rides him in there into the end zone, and uh, he's going to go ahead. And I'll show you the play here. Watch the, watch the handoff. He, Rosano almost pushes him into the end zone. <laughs> First touchdown of the season for Tyler Gurgley. And it comes to sales leads 13-0. Bednar got to try the extra point. The snap a bit low, but a nice job by the holder, Boomer Brandenstein. And the lead goes to 14-0 for Columbus to sales. An impressive drive for the Stallions as they eat up a lot of clock and a lot of yardage and now have taken a 14-0 advantage. You look at Gurgle right there, his first touchdown of the season, almost hard to believe because he went ahead and he was just, he was the, the go-to guy on that drive. But seven rushes, 22 yards, not too bad for a guy who's uh, maybe seen some limited time comparatively when you're talking about a backfield that's got the likes of Dwayne Penn and really Dino Rosano. He's another tailback back there because he keeps the ball so often. There you see Tyler Gurgley, and here is his first touchdown of the season. He had a big game in the regional final, too. You know, if I'm Gurgley, i got to go ahead and say, hey, Rosano, thanks a lot for giving me a little boost, a little push into the end zone there. And, and you know what, Rosano, he, he was about to pull the ball back out. Thanks for keeping it in the stomach. Talked about that story drive, an impressive one for the sales. 13 plays, 74 yards, and it was all set up once again by the fake punt. Great call by Coach Jacoby. I'm not sure if you want Wittering under center uh, after looking at that play, after that pass, but uh, it was effective. They got the first down, moved the chains, and now they come away with another score. Five seconds remains in the first period, and Columbus DeSales has been in charge of this game. And Derek will get ready to kick it away after he has to readjust the football after the wind again knocked it off the tee. Overcast. We've had a great deal of rain here in the Maslin area that has not kept the crowd down. This place is here at Paul Brown Tiger Stadium. You can get a look at it right there, almost capacity. Interesting to note as well, too, this facility is located right behind Maslin Washington High School, and they are having classes today at Maslin Washington High School. So if somebody has a study hall, maybe they could just come <laughs> yeah. on over and watch a bit of the football game. I think you can probably hear a lot of, a lot of stallion pride right now That's because right. they jumped out to a 14 and nothing lead. Here's a kick by Bednarik. Watson will have a chance to return this one out to the 20, and that is about it, maybe to the 21-yard line before he is knocked backwards, and that will do it for the first period here this afternoon at Paul Brown Tiger Stadium in Maslin. Columbus to sales with five losses has a two-touchdown advantage over Metro Lake Catholic. championships on ONN are brought to you by Grange Insurance, your partner in protection, by National City Bank, follow your own lead, by Cleveland Magazine, and by the Ohio Abstinence Campaign. Keep it real. The story of the game so far has been the Columbus DeSales offense and its defense. Just a moment ago, Dan Svelbar for Mentor Lake Catholic, first down carry from the 20, lost a yard. Yeah, that was Scott Wittering. Stepping up, making a huge hit. And, uh, he's not second team all Ohio for nothing. Little <laughs> pre snap movement there by the quarterback. Petrozello right now. I don't know if he's rattled or, uh, or if maybe the guys on the sideline for Lake are just a little shocked. Penalty against Better Lake Catholic. Ryan, we were talking a moment ago, Columbus to sales with five losses. They're just throwing caution to the wind here. This fake punt a moment ago, prime evidence of that. That is prime evidence. Second drive of the football game, and they're going to go ahead, and they're going to fake a, a punt in the state championship game. Now, they converted, but then again, Bob Jacoby's been around 14 years as opposed to Tom Lombardo. This is his third year coaching at, at the Lake Catholic. Five-yard walk-off makes it a second down at 16 call, and Petrozulo's back to throw. Comes to the near side, jump ball. Wow, heck, a catch by Matucci on that ball. Hung into the air, and Matucci gets out across the 45 to the 46, and a first down for Better Lake Catholic. Marty Cahill kind of confused on the play. The defensive back for DeSales, as you look at uh, Matucci, goes up and makes a great adjustment on the football. Petrozulo's just going to drop back. He's going to look right, check off, hits his second receiver. That's 
Matucci, who stopped and made a great adjustment on the football, and of course covers it up, and that's a big first down. This That's a shot of confidence that really Lake Catholic needed at this point. Absolutely. Petrozillo on the season hits 50% of his passes, but the postseason is where he has really taken charge. 627 yards passing coming into this game, and six touchdowns and two interceptions, and give Dan Belmar credit on that play. He and Petrozulo came together on the handoff, and Belmar able to turn it into a positive game for Mentor Lake Catholic. Belmar, I don't, I don't think Zelvar, who's rushed for a, a, over 1,124 yards this season, I don't think they probably have run into one another in the backfield like they just did. And, and he really made a lot, of, a lot out of nothing there. Marty Cahill on the tackle for the sales. Midfield stripe is where the ball rests for Mentor Lake Catholic. Columbus to Sales with the two touchdown advantage here in the Division Three state championship game. Much like Rosano has uh, called his own number, but unlike Rosano, finds no running room and gets dropped right around the line of scrimmage. A little misdirection play, and that's Blake McAllister who goes ahead and stays home. The right defensive end for the Sales Stallions. Does a great job of keeping his right arm free here, and he's just going to kind of wrap up. Petrozello, and that's a great play right there. Blake McAllister, I remember that. I remember Blake McAllister was uh, in the seventh grade when I coached a uh, seventh and eighth grade football <laughs> team a while back, and he's turned into quite a quite a player here. He's a junior, a big kid now, huh? Six foot two, 200 pounds. Despite your coaching, despite, he's made it this far. <laughs> despite my coaching, he's done a great job. <laughs> Better Lake Catholic struggling a bit on third downs today. Their fourth opportunity coming up, and a one of three conversion rate for the Cougars. Out of the eye this time and said two wides to the top of your screen. And Petrozulo again wants to throw. And receivers wide open. This is Matucci far side. Cuts back inside at the 15 at the 10. And Mender Lake Catholic is on the scoreboard. That's two great plays by Matucci. He made a play further on second down. And here he is on a big third down conversion. Lake Catholic needed to score on this drive to try to shut down the momentum that the DeSales Stallions were starting to build. And I'll tell you what, Matucci, he really needs to be awarded not only for a great route that he ran, but look at the, there's not, they're not a stallion in sight. Petrozello finds Matucci and then watch the great play. He goes ahead and Ronnie Smith slips on the wet turf. Matucci goes ahead and now puts it into a one score ball game. 50 yard pitch and catch for the score for Better Lake Catholic. Six touchdown reception of the season for Matucci. And the 14th touchdown pass for Petrozulo. The extra point attempt is up. And it just gets over the crossbar and good. So Better Lake Catholic has cut the lead in half on the long scoring play. We've had two in this game. One by DeSales and this one by Better Lake Catholic. Petrozillo's gone ahead and thrown 13 touchdown passes this season. None probably uh, in his mind as pretty as this one to Matucci because Matucci goes ahead and makes a guy miss and gets into the end zone for a state title game to throw a touchdown when you're down 14 to nothing. Not only helps your confidence, but the team's confidence. I got a feeling the late Catholic D's now a little inspired and wants to get out there and try to shut down what offensively DeSales has done to them thus far. They haven't been able to shut them down. We'll see this is a big offensive series now for uh, Jacoby and the boys. 80 yards on that drive on passes to Matucci for Mentor Lake Catholic. He and Mark Watson have been the tag team receivers this season, the favorite targets of Petrozulo. So 14 to 7 is now the Columbus to Sales advantage. Five plays, 79 yards, the scoring drive for Mentor Lake Catholic. Back deep for the Sales. Ronnie Smith. And Dwayne Penn. New field to kick. Ronnie Smith, I got a feeling, would like to have that back. When Matucci took the uh, took that reception, he was kind of... Ronnie Smith is in no man's land, and he tried to make a play and slipped on the turf, and that's how Matucci got into the end zone. And uh, I, I think Ronnie Smith probably wants the ball to be kicked to him so he could try to make something out of, his, out of here. Well, we saw Ronnie Smith slide on the turf a moment ago. This is the sales first game on the artificial surface. They have practice. They practice at Ohio State on the turf at Ohio State. The kicker goes into the end zone to pass Ronnie Smith and out of the back of the end zone. And Smith slipped and fell on that defensive play a moment ago on the scoring drive capped off by the touchdown pass. That's right. Five plays, 79 yards, gone ahead and took two minutes and, four, and 55 seconds off the clock. But what was key in that drive were the two receptions, not just the 50-yard touchdown reception by uh, Matucci, but the, the one on the second down where that kind of got the offense to move the chains and got them some confidence, and, and really the 50-yard touchdown, that, that just says enough. So Matucci with two huge receptions in that scoring drive for Lake Catholic. 
Dino Rosano leads the, the sales dives to the line of scrimmage. Inside handoff, Gurgley. And he has done the majority of the carrying for the sales on the ground here in this first half. So Mike Gibbons in there on the stop, and we're going to see him, uh, number 40, wearing green. You're going to see him flying around all day today. Interesting story, Mike Gibbons. He is coach Tom Lombardo's brother-in-law, the son of longtime Mentor Lake Catholic coach John Gibbons. They coach Tom Lombardo was married to one of John Gibbons' nine children, and so they certainly keep it in the family in Lake Catholic. And Rosano inside that time. Short game. What if that causes any problems when they sit around and talk about game plans and things along those lines? How do you criticize your brother-in-law? Yeah, that makes it tough. I mean, in film study, right? <laughs> that's right. <laughs> when folks have problems with their in-laws, I don't know if that's the case, though, for uh, Tom Lombardo. <laughs> Right now, it looks like a couple of the other linebackers getting into it uh, for Lake. Sales almost looks confused here in this third down play. Because Dino Rosano checking the plays on his right wrist. And Dwayne Penn wrapped up. We were just talking about Mike Gibbons, and he was there to make the stop that time. Big play. That's the first time that this defense has stopped the sales this entire game, and it took them to the second quarter to try to figure out what they're doing as far as that triple option is concerned, and this time, they had Dwayne Penn right in the backfield, and it's Mike Gibbons. He's going to step up and make the tackle for a loss and now get his uh, his offense back on the football field. Fourth down for DeSales. And DeNaris will kick it away off the side of his foot. A short kick, but will take a decent roll inside the 40 and is wobbling dead and down at the 40 and that's where Mandel Lake Catholic will start an offense when we return Columbus to sales leads 14 to 7 over the Mentor Lake Catholic Cougars in the Division 3 state championship game on ONN. Here at Massillon and Paul Brown Tiger Stadium the producer of this afternoon's game is Brian Johnson Pat Murray's our director and it's a pleasure to have you with us here today as well too. 14 to 7 is the lead for Rod Jacoby's Columbus to Sales Stallion. Lake Catholic just stepped up on defense a three and out the first time all afternoon and now their offense is back on the field looking for a chance to tie the game here. First down and 10 for Metro Lake Catholic. Reaching the state championship game with a 30 to 6 win last week over Bellevue and here's Petrozulo quarterback draw out to the 45-yard line. We talked about this before. Petrozillo, he's not only thrown over 1,000 yards this year, but he's also rushed for over 1,000 yards this year. In this particular play, you almost could see it from the get-go. They spread everybody out, an empty set, shotgun, and it's just a quarterback draw right from the beginning, and it picks up five yards. Six carries, 29 yards for Petrozillo. 149, his high this year against Akron Holman, and that was a pretty good defense. He did that damage because he's on the roll this time to throw, and the pass incomplete. Mark Watson, the intended receiver near the sales bench. Good idea there, rolling to his right. He had Watson open, he just got a little excited. You're going to see him here kind of, he had Matucci almost as well, but he gets a little excited and kind of overthrows Watson there. Petrozello, the First team All-Ohio quarterback as a sophomore. His regular season numbers and to this date include 50% of his completion. Two of four on third downs today are the late Catholic Cougars. And they try and convert here and it's Petrozillo again. And he has the first down and more. Fumbled the football. Still losing to sales has it. Petruzzillo. Angelo Pua comes away with a fumble. It looks like they're going to get a celebration flag on DeSales afterwards. They were so excited. And I saw Petrozillo just really frustrated with himself get up and kind of throw his hand. You're going to see him here. This is a great individual effort on his part. The fake, it's automatically going to be a run by the quarterback. And he's get, trying to pick up the extra yardage. And it looks almost, who is that in there? Dan Brown's going to come in there and strip the ball for DeSales. And Angelo Kua just kind of coming up with the, uh, with the recovery. And uh, the penalty flag after the play, Ryan, was on Mentor Lake Catholic. Ooh. So adding insult to injury after the fumble exactly. recovery. I'm not exactly sure what the penalty was for. Obviously, probably unsportsmanlike conduct. But uh, that's the second turnover now 
uh, by Petrozillo. He's thrown one interception and now he's coughed the ball up once. And the interception led to points for Columbus to sales. The Stallions will try to convert here, leading 14 to 7. 6.25 remains in this second period. Here's Rosano wrapped up right around the line of scrimmage and dropped. Good penetration that time by Menderley Catholic on defense. That was Russell Dolce coming in to make the hit. I almost think Rosano didn't do a good job here finding his hole. You know, you look at Penn, you're going to watch Penn, they're going to throw him in motion. He gives the fake to the handoff to both players, and in the the, the hole was almost to the inside. Gibbons was to the outside, and unfortunately for Rosano, that's where he went, right where big number 40 was. Penn will start in motion again, and this is Gergley on the carry, and again, it's Russell Dolce, one of the two inside linebackers, the second leading tackler for Metro Lake Catholic this season, making the stop. One of the things that Dolce talked about leading into the game against this triple option as you're watching make the stop here they have to play assignment football Ryan they definitely have to make a lot of a, a lot it's a lot different because you've got to be patient you can't just rely on the swarming style of defense that ca Catholics used to they're used to just flying around doing it with speed and making plays now you've got to stay home and make sure you got to wrap up guys like Gergley or, or when you get a, a quarterback like a Rosano who's going to keep the football a guy like Penn there's a lot of options here for the sales so that's why Lake Catholic's got to do a better job of staying home, and they do have done so these last two drives. Columbus DeSales forced to burn a timeout as looked to be a little confusion on offense that time, and Bob Jacoby will come out and meet with his offense right around the 40-yard line. Well, with 5.20 left, this is a big down for DeSales. They understand that to get a turnover the way that they just did and not to come away with any points on the board would, would obviously hurt the DeSales Staggots. First play of the game that led to points was a touchdown pass from Rosano to Dwayne Penn. Last week he wrestled the ball away in the end zone for a touchdown pass. Today though he just outran people. Rosano just finds a real quick it's just a real quick pop pass and then he takes it to the house showing his speed gets to the sideline and outruns the all Ohio defensive player in division three there Mike Gibbons to the corner of the end zone to put to sales up seven nothing. Well it should be noted on that touchdown uh, run a moment ago by Penn uh, that we just showed you it was a great block by split end Ryan Sensor that freed Dwayne Penn. Ryan Sensor I think uh, Danny Gibson or Donnie Gibson excuse me Donnie Gibson also had a nice block on that play. Third down and five for the sales and Rosano to throw in the pass behind Ryan Sensor. Try the little dump over the middle that time to the 6'2", 190-pound junior sensor. And Better Lake Catholic able to come up with the stop and a fourth down upcoming for DeSales. Same play that they hit Penn on for the touchdown. This time, though, it, pass was off the mark, and it goes incomplete. There, it looks like they're going to put it away. Now, they, they faked it last time. They'll probably kick this one away. Try and play a little field position here with 5'17 remaining in the first half. The DeSales lead at a touchdown at 14 to 7. Wintering trying to angle this one out of bounds to the far side and gets a nice roll inside the 10 at the 8 is where Metter Lake Catholic will start first down and 10. Just what DeSales wanted. How about Wintering? His first punt of the day, he pulls it down, fakes the run, dumps it off, and gets the uh, first down. And then this one, he goes ahead and pins Lake Catholic inside the 10 by with a great uh, punt with the angle right there, kind of trying to get the coffin corner and, and did a good job. Now the stallion defense comes out into the field. But, you know, Lake Catholics, uh, offensively, they had things going on the touchdown drive. Then they had things going until their quarterback coughed the ball up. Now, So they've got some confidence, but now to ask them to go 92 yards, which is basically what they have to do here, it's kind of tough, but uh, they should be up to the task. Finish the state as the number 13 ranked team, according to the Associated Press, did the Better Lake Catholic Cougars, and Petrozillo to the near side. Mike Gibbons makes the catch on the short dump pass to the outside. Dwayne Penn over there to make the stop yeah, don't for be, DeSales. Don't be surprised. That's number 40 playing offense as well. He's he's Mr. Everything. He's d done a great job all season long for Lake, and He's a big reason why they're in this state championship game, not just because of what he does on defense, but what he does on offense as well. We talk about playing field position. That's certainly a big factor, especially in a state championship game, and DeSales has had a bit of an advantage there today. Definitely. DeSales has done a better job really protecting the football. A lot of it has to do with those two turnovers that Lake Catholic has had. Watson makes the catch and bikes to the 25-yard line and a first down to pick up a 13 for Mender Lake Catholic. Again, nothing fancy for Mender Lake. They just dump it out to the outside. And Mark Watson with the reception, and then he did it all after that. Yeah, Mark Watson does a good job not only getting open, but then securing the football, and then, uh, you know, going ahead and getting some extra yardage after the catch. He's had 34 catches this year for over 570 yards, so he's really been one of the guys that Petrozello really looks to as far as trying to pick it up and move the chains. 
420 remains in the first half. Mender Lake Catholic trying to work out of the shadow of their own end zone. And they have it out to the 25-yard line. Here's Petri Rule again on the roll. And almost a tremendous catch by Brandon Savage, but he got taken out of the play. A big hit there by Angelo Kua, who came in for Columbus DeSales. Kua should get a big hit of the game for that one. He goes ahead and, and breaks up the play. The play really took a lot, a lot, a long time to develop. Petrozillo looking for his third option, and it was Savage coming across from the right side. It was a drag. He's the tight end on the right side, coming all the way across on the field. And, and really, the ball kind of a little bit behind him, but Kua really made the, made the play there. So a second down and 10 call up coming. Mentor Lake Catholic, their high point total this season was 36 against Parma of Padua Franciscan in a regular season game. And Petrozillo is sweeping to the near side and is knocked down as he got to the near side. Ronnie Smith, who's been involved in a number of plays defensively for Columbus to sales over there to angle the Mentor Lake Catholic quarterback out of bounds. Well, Lake Catholic, what they did on this play is they went ahead and and they've got the angles right from the get-go, and they turn the corner. You look at uh, number 20 right there, Spellbar did a great job of sealing off the end, wittering, so that Petrozillo could have a corner and run down the field. Unfortunately for Lake, they just didn't pick up the first down. Mark Petrozillo with the Mentor Lake Catholic Cougars back to the line of scrimmage. And now before the Ball can be snapped. We have another timeout called. Mentor Lake Catholic calling the timeout. Mentor Lake Catholic trailing 14 to 7 to Columbus to Sales. Tonight's game can be seen again this evening. Today's game, Mentor Lake Catholic, Columbus St. Francis to Sales. Watch it again at midnight here on the Ohio News Network. The Division Three State Championship game here at Paul Brown Tiger Stadium in Massillon. And the folks here at Maslin should uh, be congratulated for what they do as far as putting on a state championship game. I don't know of any other situation around maybe the country, Ryan, where you have uh, two facilities such as here in Maslin and over in Camden Fawcett Stadium that play host to state championship games. Most every other place you go to one site. <laughs> no doubt about it. And these two facilities that they have here uh, are just phenomenal. And, and this one that we're, uh, we've, we've been, a, uh, haven't had an opportunity to watch a few games here in, in years past. And, and they just, uh, each and every year, they just, the accommodations have been great. And, uh, you know, it's, it's perfect for these two great football teams to be out here. I know Lake here on third down, they've done a good job. And um, on third down conversions, though, the sales has the advantage of uh, shutting them down. Five third down uh, conversions, and it's they've only con uh, converted on two of them. And the defense has been doing a good job as well, too, keeping the sales in check after jumping out 14-0. You saw the stat a moment ago. The sales has been three and out their last two opportunities. Petrozillo tries to convert on third down. And Matucci again adjusts and makes the catch. And another first down. I bet you Dwayne Penn, Penn would like to have that back. If if we could watch Matucci's route, which he may, he, he, the guy's been running great routes. Matucci, Watson, the, the entire uh, wide receiving core for Lake Catholic has really been doing a good job for, for Petrozillo, who's going to fake the run, step up, and he drops back, gives a pump fake, and then he goes ahead and throws to Matucci, who Matucci ran an out and up, and that's when Penn bit on the out, and you saw him having to chase down Matucci when it was all said and done. Out to the 44-yard line, and a first down for Metro Lake Catholic. Petrozillo again trying to sprint to the near side, and now the way Penn makes the play to get tackle that time. As Petrozillo tried to turn it up to the near side, and Dwayne Penn racing up to make the stop for Columbus to Sales. Penn played a lot this season on defense, one of the two-way performers for Columbus to Sales. Yeah, he had a pick for a touchdown earlier this year. I think he's had four interceptions uh, on the season, but you watch Petrozillo here. He just pulls it down. It's a, it's a call, his called number all the way, and it's not just Penn, but a host of stallion tacklers right there. One-yard pickup. Nine carries, 42 yards for Petrozillo, who this time wants to throw. And again, the pass is caught far side. This is Mark Watson into DeSales territory and another first down for Mentor Lake Catholic. They're kind of picking on Penn over there a little bit. Penn just didn't get enough width. Uh, and, and again, Watson, I can't say enough how good of routes these guys are running. Petrozillo throws a th throws just the ball on the money. Uh, but it was a great route, again, ran by Mark Watson. And uh, he picks up a first down. 17 yards on the pitch and catch. Watson, come here. I need you. <laughs> now, that wasn't the prettiest looking ball in the world. 
I'm not going to say anything about a duck or anything, but I, I will say it wasn't the prettiest ball. Absolutely, but it, it got there. Yeah. It's fourth catch of the day for Watson. First down and 10 to the DeSales 38. And Petrozulo calls his own number and breaks free. Petrozulo to the 20 yard line and another first down for Better Lake Catholic, run down from behind by Angelo Kua. Well, these two quarterbacks today are really stepping up and playing state championship caliber of football. Petrozillo keeping his feet here. Watch, he kind of runs through one arm tackle, and then he has some open space to try to work. Now, watch, here's my favorite part. He's about to get hit, and he holt wraps the ball up. Remember, he, <laughs> he right. popped it up earlier in the game, so he's going to wrap it up and take it down, and I know Coach Lombardo's over on the sideline smiling when he sees both hands go ahead and cover up that football. Great shot by the cameraman. 23-yard pickup for... Petrozulo and Better Lake Catholic on the move. Under two minutes left first half. They trail 14 to 7. But they're down to the DeSales 15-yard line. And it's Petrozulo again. The ball pops loose and DeSales has it. You know, I just praise the guy. I just praise the guy for covering up the football. And this time he gets a little cute. One hand on the football and it comes loose. Hey, they're playing on a wet surface out there, Marty. We saw it in the pregame. Guys were slipping around. And I'm sure the pigskin's got to be a little wet and slippery. Looked like Scott Wintering came away with a loose football for Columbus DeSales. He's nice tight shot on the football here. Slips it out, but he only has one hand on the football, and that's where it comes to, it comes free. I can't quite tell who uh, you might be able to see by this number here who uh, ended up stripping the football. That was Mark Wilson at the bottom of that pile, Ryan, that punched arm in there, a hand in there, and knocked that ball away. So uh, another break for DeSales and Tyler Gurgley. A short carry out across the 15 to the 16, and if you're to sales right now with 95 seconds left, just keep it close to the vest, get to the locker room with a touchdown advantage. That's right. You'd love to maybe try to get down there and, and punch one in, uh, but the main thing is move the chains and keep Lake Catholic, who's been having success offensively, and besides shooting themselves in the foot, They've been having some success moving the football. You look right there. They've turned the ball over three times. DeSales has yet to uh, call, or, or turn the ball over, and that's the reason why DeSales has a one-touchdown lead at this point. Tom Lombardo looking on from the Better Lake Catholic sideline. Lombardo gives this time to Dwayne Penn, and short running room for Penn. It's interesting to watch the... DeSales players on offense, when they come to the line of scrimmage, they're all checking their left wrist for the play. It almost looks as if the Better Lake Catholic guys are asking them what time it is. <laughs> I'm not sure there's I'm not sure they're having that much of friendly chat yeah. out there. I'm, I'm sure they're talking, but it's not that friendly. That's right. <laughs> asking what time it is. You look at the play here, Penn just kind of gets uh, just a lot of green there in that pile. And Lake Catholic has really come alive here in this second quarter defensively. Clock continuing to roll as we go under half a minute remaining. Columbus to Sales with the touchdown advantage, looking for a state championship for the Division III state title game here in Maslin. Gurgley hit right around the line of scrimmage, which was the 19-yard line. Mike Gibbons in on the stop for Bender Lake Catholic. Clock stops with seven seconds left. The timeout called. Tom Lombardo figuring for us to sales the punt. At least we'll get one chance here on a punt return or something along those lines. Maybe a punt block, maybe a send everybody, and who knows, you know, special teams, when you get to this point, special teams are so crucial. Uh, you got some athletes there on those special teams, and if you can get a punt block, I mean, you're, you backed up the sales into the end zone here. I mean, crazier things have happened, and uh, I think Lake Catholic would like nothing more, maybe just to try to get something out of nothing here um, right before the end of the half and going into the locker room feeling good. But regardless, I mean, going into the locker room right now, Lake Catholic has got to feel good about what they're doing defensively. Offensively, you take away the three turnovers, and they've really done a good job of moving the football. Unfortunately, they just haven't been able to come away with many points other than the 50-yard touchdown reception by Matucci. You talk about feeling good about themselves. They've turned it over three times. They're only down by a touchdown going to the break. Coming up at the half, Douglas Sells will be along from our studios at the Ohio News Network to recap the first half for you. And that comes your way at the intermission. Lake Catholic puts a rush on and a fair catch signal for by Matucci. With two seconds left, so... Take a shot. Yep, give it a chance here. For Mender Lake Catholic. See what Tom Lombardo has up his sleeve offensively here. They want to try something 
Q2 or just turn back and let it fly towards the end zone. Hey, you know, you got nothing to lose. I think you just two go ahead. Left, yeah, two yeah. seconds left. Go ahead and throw it up there. Um, I think Matucci and Watson have both been running fabulous routes all day. And really, the quarterback, uh, Petrozillo, has done a good job finding those two wide receivers. And I, I think you probably try to get those guys in some kind of a crossing route and uh, just kind of throw it up and see what you can come up with with two seconds left here and uh, kind of hope for the best. The sales looks like they're going to put uh, about seven men on, on the on the goal line here. So with two seconds left, Dan Shannon, the place kicker, is out on the field. A 50-yard field goal attempt, a free kick upcoming here. Now, I'll, I'll be honest with you, uh, Marty. I, this is the first one of these that I've seen. <laughs> well, we'll see how it works out. It's up, and it will go wide to the right. Hey, take a shot. What the heck? Try to get points. Two seconds left. Take Shannon it. gave it a shot. That way there's no interception returned. Almost as good as a punt. <laughs> That's right. 14 to 7 is Columbus to sales advantage. At and Dave Lake Catholic showing its quick strike ability. A 50 yard touchdown pass from Mark Petrozello to Matt Matucci. And that, you know, he gets open here, uh, Doug, but I think we've, we've seen, we're going to see a missed tackle here. And I think if, if you go back to the sales two touchdowns, you also saw missed tackles. And I think that, again, it just comes down to fundamental football making the plays. Here's fundamentals. The DeSales defense coming up big again, forcing the fumble by Petrozulo, and Angelo Kua recovers for the Stallions. And Lee, like they say, defense wins championships. Yeah, uh, this, uh, Lake, Lake Catholic has three turnovers, all three by quarterback Mark Petrozulo. you got to remember, he's a sophomore. It's the biggest game he's played in. And, you know, is it nerves? Is it just, you know, good tackling? Uh, there, he, it seemed to me he almost ran into one of his own teammates. Teammates, but you've got to protect that ball, especially close to the end zone. You've got to have both hands on it. Coach Dob Meyer knows that. That's for sure. All right, so uh, DeSales leading 14 to 7 at the half, and Coach can DeSales' tough defense keep that high powered Lake Catholic offense from scoring again in the second half? Well, you know, there's an old adage in, in uh, playoff football, Doug. You run to get in the playoffs, you pass to stay. And what, what we saw happen in that first half, particularly, is that uh, Lake Catholic could not run the ball at all but they were able to turn to the pass to be able to get the ball down the field. So I think that uh, their passing game is going to be very important here in the second half. All right, thanks a lot, guys. So at halftime of the Division Three State Championship game, it is indeed the Columbus DeSales Stallions leading the Lake Catholic Cougars. The uh, score right there, 14-7. to All righty, we'll have a lot more of the halftime show, plus a news and weather update when we come back to Championship Weekend here on the Ohio News Network. Brown Tiger Stadium in Maslin. Marty Bannister, Ryan Miller back with you. Columbus to sales with the 14 to 7 advantage. Turnover is a big factor in this first half. Ryan Miller, one of those led to a DeSales score. That's right. The first uh, turnover of the game, and it's big. Ronnie Smith coming through uh, with the big touch, with the big uh, interception that led to a touchdown. Here's the second turnover, and that's by the quarterback, Petrozillo. And then the third turnover, Petrozillo again. So he's fumbled the ball twice, and he's thrown an interception, and, you, and if you look right now, with the three turnovers, that's the true story of the football game because DeSales has really treated that football like it's a precious jewel because they haven't given it up. Nine first downs to six in favor of Metro Lake Catholic, but you look into the second period, you go a little deeper into the numbers. DeSales in the second quarter did not have a first down, had just 18 yards rushing, 18 total yards of offense in the second period. Almost like a tale of two quarters. Very much Lake so. Catholic came out and they almost looked tentative and, and excited to be here and nervous, anxiousness. And that first quarter wasn't the Lake Catholic that you saw in the second quarter. And for DeSales, they just so happened to capitalize on the mistakes that Lake Catholic was going ahead and making in that first quarter. That's how they got up to a 14 and nothing lead. Catholic went ahead and put a, a 50 yard touchdown pass uh, on the board to go ahead and get the ball or get the game to a 14 to seven. And that's where we stand right now. Touchdown advantage for Columbus DeSales. The second half is coming up next here on the Ohio News Network. advantage for Columbus DeSales here in the Division 3 state championship game and DeSales will have the football to start the second half 
here this afternoon. Tyler Gurgley and Dino Rosano have done most of the damage running the football. We thought we'd see a lot of Dwayne Penn carrying the football on the ground, the thousand yard rusher, but they kind of kept mental late Catholic, or at least tried to keep him a little off balance in that regard. That's right, Rosano, the quarterback, he's really been picking him up and laying him down, and he's been the story for the game offensively uh, for the, the sales stallions. By the way, you want to talk about a rushing team. They've so far had 24 total plays. 21 of them have been rushing the football. That just goes to show you that uh, Bob Jacoby believes about what they can do on the ground. Here's a look at Dwayne Penn right there. Just 10 yards rushing. That's usually a gain for Dwayne Penn. Well, that's the shocking number is the four. Right. Four, four carries in the first half of a state championship game for your Mr. Everything in Dwayne Penn. You know, you might see him a little more this second half, but Rosano did a great job in the first bat half of keeping the football and picking up a lot of yardage. Uh, and fortunately for the DeSalle Stallions, they got a couple of touchdowns out of a couple of nice drives off of a couple of turnovers by the late Catholic Cougars. But the one thing that you have to keep in the back of your mind certainly is Dwayne Penn's one of those type of guys that can explode at any moment and have a big half or a big quarter. That certainly has to be in the back of the minds of the better late Catholic coaching staff. They will kick it away as we get ready to start the second half. Dan Shannon, who tried that 50-yard free-kick field goal attempt at the end of the half, kicks this one much shorter. Penn will watch it roll, bend down and pick it up. Trying to find some running room and gets just across the 20. And that's where the sale will start. First down to 10 here in the second half, leading 14 to 7 here today for Columbus to sales. Their last trip to the state championship back in 1998. A 21-14 win over Walsh Jesuit over in Canton for Mentor Lake Catholic. They returned since uh, 1992, their first trip back. And in 1992, they won the state championship on this very field, beating Ironton 31-7 in the 1992 state championship game. You look at Coach Jacoby there. I think these first few minutes of this quarter are going to be crucial to try to dictate what kind of, who's going to have the momentum here for the rest of the game. First down and 10 for the sales. Initial play of the second half is Rosano. Very short running room. The ball of, of the line of scrimmage the ball to 23 and Rosano gets a yard. I talked about uh, trying to go ahead and get out, off to a quick start. DeSales did that in the first half. Their first two drives resulted into two touchdowns. Their last three drives, however, of the half resulted in three and outs. So I know Bob Jacoby is going to want to try to get this one, this drive going here and try to move some chains and, and try to come away with some points at least. Not a better stat guy in the business than Tom Boschenek, and he's with us up here in the booth today doing Amen. a wonderful job. Numbers are us. <laughs> There's Rosano looking at his wristband. Here's Rosano dumping it over the pass. It's for Penn, and it's intercepted. Tom Dwyer takes the pass on the tip, and the turnovers, we talked about them early on, and now Mentor Lake Catholic able to come away with one. Capitalizes on the biggest one of the game so far. Tom Dwyer off of the tip. This is the exact same play that DeSales ran for a touchdown to Dwayne Penn. You're going to watch it right here. Here's Rosano. The fake, the only difference is it's to the other side of the field. It's to the right side this time, and it's to Penn, and Penn really could have come up with it, but Kananaya comes up with a big hit, and that forces the turnover. Tom Dwyer with this huge, for the senior, man, that's got to feel good. Mark Petrozello leads the late Catholic offense to the line of scrimmage. Can they convert? Petrozello, his own number, and from the 33, maybe a yard, maybe. We'll see how generous our officiating crew is. This is where the defense for the DeSales Stallions is going to have to really have to step up. A yard on the carry by... Petrozello, who in the first half passing the football was 8 of 12, 151 yards, touchdown, an interception, but a big second period where he was 6 of 8 for a buck 28 of that 151. Second down. Operate out of the shotgun this time. Good look at the first team All Ohio sophomore quarterback. He's on the sprint to throw. Now we'll tuck it and run. And it is knocked down to Wayne Penn. And Addington over there to bring him down. You know, you say the sophomore quarterback, it's almost hard to believe this kid is a sophomore. He's maybe that maybe that could account for maybe some of the mistakes, the three turnovers that he's had thus far, but he really does a good job with this offense. Look, he, he looks, he tries to find somebody downfield and then just calls his own number and picks up some yards, some positive yardage. He's done a, he's been a tough uh, he's done a tough job for the uh, DeSales Stallion trying to wrap him up today. 73 yards on 13 carries and a big third down coming up here as Mentor Lake Catholic tries to capitalize on the turnover. But Buzzello again looking for running room and finding not much at all. Right around the line of scrimmage. 
where he was dropped. Josh Nesser in on the stop for Columbus to sales. And now a fourth down upcoming for Tom Lombardo's offense. Doesn't look like there's any movement. It almost looks as if uh, there's no question here. They're going to go ahead and try to go for it on fourth down. Although they bring out the big big boy, they bring out the fullback, and they put a, a smaller back in. Yeah, they're, it looks like they're going to go for it. Fourth down and three. Early on in this third period, you'd have to take a big play in this game. The sales leading 14 to 7. Better late Catholic trying to convert on a the sales turnover and trying to convert on fourth down. Two wides to the top of the screen. That's Azulo. Looks to throw. Touch the football and he'll go down and the sales will get the football. You know, you talk about key plays when I think Ben Ro I think it's Roth Roth. He goes ahead and makes this stop. When you look back at this end of this game, a fourth and two opportunity that Lake Catholic had on their on going into to DeSales stay in territory and they just couldn't complete the, the pass and they're kind of tackled for a loss and uh, that's that's going to be one of those that uh, I think Coach Lombardo would like to have back. Tried to hold the defense a little bit on that quick play fake and Petrozulo found no running room at all that time so DeSales gets the ball back three minutes into the third quarter after the turnover and Tito Rosano with the offense back to the line of scrimmage. Rosano on the option, turns it up and has running room and is caught from behind by Mike Gibbons. Rosano was on the move that time, but Mike Gibbons able to trip him up out near the 40, pick up a 13 out of first down. Talk about Rosano, he's, he's done it all game long. He's, uh, he, you know, he doesn't go ahead and, and rush for over 1,000 yards during the course of the regular season for nothing. He really understands the offense, the triple option. He, he rides the fullback in with the fake, kind of fakes the pitch to, to Dwayne Penn and cuts it upfield. We've seen him do that a number of times today, and he picks up 13 there. That was the first first down for DeSales since the first period. Mark Petrozillo being tended to on the Mentor Lake Catholic sideline, and here is Gurgley coming to the near side for... <laughs> Columbus to sales out near the 45. So Mike Gibbons on the tackle. You know, Gurgley and, and Rosano, they really know one another well because of how long that they ride one another in with that football. It's almost like they understand exactly when that football is going to either go to Gurgley or, or get pulled out of his belly. 11 rushes today for 35 yards and, of course, his first touchdown of the year. Second down at five call, and this is Gurgley again. The first down and more into Better Lake Catholic territory. The big bruising fullback pounding ahead for the first down for Columbus to sales. Just some tough running there right up the gut. The quick hitter by Gurgley. You're going to watch him right here. He finds a little seam, and he just kind of runs over the first tackler. And Katnea has to bring him down, but you watch him right here. There was no question right from the get-go that Rosano was going to give him the football. Great job by the DeSales offensive line, opening up the gap that time, and Gurgley just had to run through it. Andy Wills, Jim Holly, David Shelby, Michael Rohr, Dan Enders across that front. Here's Rosano on the move again to the 30. Rosano to the 25, and a first down for DeSales. You know, they had such success with Gurgley up the middle on the previous play. This time, what Rosano's going to do is he's not going to give the ball to Gurgley. He's going to pull it out. As you see here, and everyone from the Lake Catholic defense bites in, and Rosano's going to say, okay, I'm just going to take it around and pick up some serious yards. Inside the 25 to the 23, a gain of 22 for Dino Rosano. You see again Rosano checking the play at his wrist. Right, I want to ask you about that in a moment. Get to it after this play as Dino Rosano nears the century mark, rushing the football. And here's Rosano again. Inside the 15 to the 14, the ball pops loose. Mike Gibbons comes out of the pack with it, but the officials are hardly No, they're going to say it's a turnover. And Better Lake Catholic again comes away with a mistake. Mike Gibbons came out of the pack with the football. Looked for a moment like they were going to blow that play dead. Well, this is awfully similar to the first half, only reversed this time. You know, DeSales doing a good job moving the chains, moving the football. Mike Gibbons, you see him running off the field, is going to be the beneficiary of Rosano putting the ball on the ground. He makes a good decision on, on holding onto the football and not pitching it. But uh, yeah, there it popped out, yeah. Yeah, he, it was a hand he was stripped out. Now, whether his knee was down, yeah, it's a questionable call. That's why they uh, got the guys with the zebras out there. Fifth turnover of the game, second against Columbus DeSales, and here's Petrozulo finding Mark Watson at the. 26-yard line and an 11-yard pickup for a first down for Mentor Lake Catholic. Catholic's offense has really gained confidence in that second quarter, and I know that they went for it on fourth down the first time they touched the football here in the second half, but 
they've really done a good job of throwing the football and, and moving the chains. Unfortunately for, for Catholic, they just haven't been able to put it in the end zone. They've got one score today, and right now they look a little confused offensively as they're trying to get some guys out wide. And, and they've been throwing the football, though, with some serious success. Second leading receiver on the season for Metter Lake Catholic is Mark Watson. Missed six games earlier this year with a torn knee ligament. Tom Lombardo asking for an explanation. Sideline warning to the Metter Lake sideline. Players need to stay off of the whites as you see Tom Lombardo standing on the white area between the playing field and the sideline. Tom Lombardo telling the officials exactly where he was standing. That makes sense. Yeah. Here's where I was right here, guys. Yeah. <laughs> Coach Lombardo, of course, three years at the school. First time in the state championship game. He's done a great job with his team all year long, making them believe that they should be here. I know you were very impressed with him, but we spoke to him prior to the game this morning. Here's Petrozillo to throw, and again goes to Mark Watson, and again a first down out to the 40, 13 more yards. Petrozillo, he's throwing the football well. He, during the course of the regular season, he threw 117 completions, rather, 230 passes, 117 completions, and one of his favorite targets was Mark Watson, who you see here making another reception. He just runs good routes. He sat down there in a nice curl route, and, and uh, Petrozillo went ahead and just found him. Safety Angelo Kua made the stop. Good numbers for Petrozillo. 10 of 14 throwing the football. Now he's going to tuck and run, trying to get to the near side, and is knocked down. A lot of white shirts running around the quarterback. Petrozillo. I think Scott, Scott Wintering. Wintering yeah. yeah, yeah. He really did a good job. Scott Wintering. You're going to watch him never give up on this play. It almost looked as if Petrozillo was going to go ahead and have the corner. And Wintering, what he do, what's he do? He grabs his, his uh, shoulder pads there. How about Dwayne Penn stepping up and kind right. of getting in his face? Well, you talked about Wintering, and the great thing there by grabbing the jersey, it slowed Petrozillo down long enough for help to arrive. Second down and 10. Out of the shotgun this time. Chased on the run and Wintering missed him this time. And Petrozillo able to pick up a couple of yards that time. Boy, Wintering had him dead to rights in the backfield that time, but Petrozillo able to escape the tackle try. Dan Dan Brown was the guy who made this play. Watch him. He's gonna come in your middle of your screen. A blitz up the middle that forces Petrozillo to the to the outside. Wintering just unfortunately couldn't make the play, but the great pursuit by the Stallions defense, and it's Ben Rothroff who goes ahead and chases him down and makes the tackle and forces now Catholic into a tough third down situation. You know, this is a, a situation where you almost think they have to pass, and one of the guys who they've been having success with is number seven, Mark Watson. Third down and eight call. Under five minutes remaining, third period. Petrozillo again to throw to the near side. Matucci makes the catch in sales territory, and another first down and another conversion on third down by Better Lake Catholic. Great two-man route by uh, Matucci and by Watson. Watson goes ahead and runs a square in. Matucci kind of runs a little out route, and, and Petrozillo doing a good job of looking one of the receivers off and just going to throw it. Nice, nice toss, a nice catch. Matucci and Watson, I can't tell you enough how good of routes these two have been running all day. The turnovers has certainly played a big factor in this game, and that slowed down Metter Lake Catholic, which has dominated after the first period as far as first downs are concerned. Here's Gibbons on the carry to the 44. In fact, that was Felbar, the carrier, the halfback, number two rusher for Metter Lake Catholic. Yeah, he rushed for over 1,000 yards this season, so he's a, a pretty good tailback in his own right. Six foot one, 180 pound oh, senior. 44 yard line. So go out of the eye this time. Gibbons and Belbar. Near side, Watson again makes the catch, trying to shake out of a tackle with that. Over there to wrap him up, Ronnie Smith at the bottom of the play. Ronnie Smith, I think, really did a good job wrapping him up because we've seen Watson, he can turn uh, no, something out of nothing. And I, I think he was going to get some serious yards here if it wasn't for Ronnie Smith. But we said it again. I, you keep saying it. Mark Watson has really done a good job. And you know what? When you're playing in a state championship game for a senior to come out and so far to have the kind of performance that Watson's had, and Matucci for that matter, it's really got to feel good because you're playing your best football right here at the best time. Better late Catholic batting 500 on third downs, four for eight. 
Petrozillo will make it this time as the DeSales defense, Dan Brown, at the top of the play, and on the bottom was Addington. So now a fourth down and short coming up, and we'll see what Tom Lombardo's mindset is here. This, uh, this play almost looks as if it's confusion time. I know it was probably a call from the quarterback, but the play took so long to develop when you only need a couple of yards, it's tough to get those kind of plays against good defenses like the Stallions have. 30-year-old Tom Lombardo looking on from the Better Lake Catholic sideline as his offense comes to the line of scrimmage on fourth down and two. Gibbons and Belpar. Petruzzullo to throw. Little ball fake. Near side. Watson jump ball. And he caught it. And he caught it. What a grab inside the 10. First, first and goal coming up for Better Lake Catholic. How about Watson? Mark Watson? Angelo Kua and Ronnie Smith we're right there for Watson. I keep bragging about this kid. I love watching him play. He goes ahead and it's kind of like the hitch and go. He takes off on a fly route, then takes a, a stop, and, and then he goes. And Petrozilla just throws it up for grabs. That's all Watson. Watson wanted to catch the ball more than the defenders wanted to knock down the football. And for the 5'10", 165-pound senior, who's really starting to come to his own, what a great play. Toss sweeps, Belmar. To about the nine, where he's dropped. Well, perhaps a Thunder Lake Catholic watched that replay of Dwayne Ben making that touchdown reception last week against Kedrick Alder. Very similar. They just wrestled the ball away from the defenders. Very similar. That was a really. I, I'm, I'm looking down at Watson, and he's just having a great game and going up and making a play like that. That's what high school football is all about: is putting yourself in a position to make a play, and if you have an opportunity, going up and making a big play like he just did. Two minutes remains, third period. The touchdown advantage for DeSales at 14 to 7, but Better Lake Catholic getting close. Zillow hit and dropped for a loss. Every time Better Lake Catholic has gotten close, the DeSales defense has rose to the occasion. Dan Brown that time. Dan Brown's been doing a good job for the DeSales defense, kind of quietly scout wintering as well, going ahead. The play just took too long to develop. It was another one of those out and up routes by Watson, and this time the DeSales stallion defense, they didn't bite on it. He didn't have enough time as well to throw the football, so a good job of the DeSales stallion defense bowing up here. They realize they can't let him into the end zone right now. Another third down opportunity for Lake Catholic. There you see their conversion rate today at the bottom of your screen, four of nine. They try to convert here inside screen. Watson, they're going at the five. Watson is thrown down on a nice tackle in the middle of the field that time. Angelo Kua right in the middle that time to throw down Watson, that little inside screen. I don't yeah. think you realize how good of a tackle right. that really was. That was a great play. Keeps him out of the end zone. No, gr great play down. here by Watson, and Watson's been doing it all day long, and and Kua comes in and a sure tackle right there. Now it puts uh, Lake Catholic in a tough situation here. Looks like they're on the, the two-yard line, fourth down to tie this ball game. They're, they're probably going to go for it, too. Nice tackle right there by Kua. Just wrapped him up and threw him down. So now fourth down and goal upcoming for Better Lake Catholic. And they've had some success on fourth downs today. And they're going on a fourth and goal here with 57 seconds left. In this third period, big day for Mark Watson. Over 100 yards receiving. Nine catches, 121 yards. Just you know, coming into this football game, Lake Catholic nice threw the ball. They averaged about 117 yards throwing the ball a game. So far, right now, you know what they've got? 230 yards. Mark Petrozillo, look at the other number there, though, too. 14 of 18 throwing the football. Petrozillo has really done a great job for this offense. And you know what? You said it earlier, and I don't think people at home realize this. He's a 10th grade. He's a sophomore. <laughs> That's right. So I know that man right there, Coach Lombardo, understands how important that is to have a, an individual like big old number 11 back for two more years. 11th play of the drive. 12th play of the drive. Uh, Petrozillo on the fake, tries to spin to the near side, dives, and got it! Touchdown! They're going to give it to him. And that's a sophomore. Goody performance right there. The 15-year-old sophomore into the end zone. Got the pylon to the near side. We'll take a look at it here. Watch him stretch out here. He puts the ball out for the pylon. Ooh. It looks like his knee was down. Well, even even besides the, the knee, the, the, besides the knee being down, it almost looks as if the ball doesn't get inside the pylon. Um, hey, regardless, the official was right there. I saw him down right at the, right. the corner of the end zone. The extra point attempt by 
Shannon is up and good, and we are tied at 14 all with 52 seconds left on fourth and goal. Then her late Catholic scores to tie the game. Here again, you see Petrozillo trying to get the ball inside the cone. I don't know if he got it in. So this might, maybe this is a better ca camera angle. The sales defense does a good job of stringing it out. They just didn't bring him down and gave him an opportunity to try to put the ball across the goal line. Now, whether or not he does uh, remains to be seen. It looks like Dwayne Penn knocks him out before he gets into the end zone. That's so, what you know I thought. What? I'm standing up and telling you that, yeah. was, that was not a touchdown. Yeah, I don't think he got in. Petrozillo, I hate to say it, my friend, <laughs> <laughs> but you didn't get in there. I know the officials gave it to you. Hey. Sometimes it's better to be uh, lucky than good, right? That's right. A big uh, drive for Better Lake Catholic and a big drive for Mark Petrozillo that time. That's right. 12 plays, 85 yards, six and a half, just nearly six and a half minutes off the clock. Petrozillo passing five for five, 70 yards. Watson had four of those receptions, and really they uh, they did a good job of moving those chains. And uh, you know, I think the sales when they see this tape at the end of the game, <laughs> they're they're not going to be real thrilled. Stallions might be a little bitter. 14 all now the score. And as you see, the wind knocks the football off the tee. Before Shannon can kick it away. So since that early flurry by DeSales, Better Lake Catholic withstanding the early storm, if you will, and that battle back to tie the game. Low bounding kick. Wayne Penn runs up. Lost it. Still loose in the field. And Penn just falls on top of it inside the 20 yard line. And now some tempers flare, but everyone calmed down quickly. Wintering and, uh, and get <laughs> it looked like Gibbons there. Watch Penn here. Whoops. There it is. A little disappointed in Penn there. You got to have a little more sense of urgency. You know, the ball is just, you kind of just don't turn around. You kind of, you got to get on that football. Luckily for DeSales, they, uh, they they remain owners of the football right now at this point. And this offense, they did a good job last time, unfortunately. What they do, they shot themselves in the foot and turned it over. Let's see if they can put together something here now. At their own 17 yard line with 46 seconds remaining in the third period, we are now tied. And here's Gurgley to the 20. A steady dose of Gurley right now is probably just what the doctor ordered for the DeSales offense. In the first half, that's all they were doing was they were giving the ball to Gurley, and then every once in a while, Rosanna would keep the ball, and they did a good job of moving the chains and kind of softening up this Cougar defense. Probably time for one more play here before the end of the third quarter. Second down at seven as we near 10 seconds remaining. Rosano hit in the backfield and dropped and a spirited Better Lake Catholic team right now. They're all fired up. And they sure are. Mike Gibbons, Mike Gibbons leading the charge, but Scott Sullivan also, who's had four tackles for losses on the season, had uh, had uh, Gurgley wrapped up right from the point of attack. And I tell you what, if you look at the two teams running to their perspective sidelines and during the fourth quarter, you can tell who's got the momentum right now. It looks like the Cougars are really pumped up. We're tied, or then again, are we? 14-14, the sales of Better Lake Catholic. For the period, the sales, Columbus to sales, Better Lake Catholic. As we start the fourth period, the sales facing a third down and eight at the 18 yard line, and Rosanna the throw has a receiver. Ryan Setzer makes a nice catch of that pass out to the 35 and a first down. It's not like he was uncovered, too. I mean, there's a a couple of different Cougars that were around that stallion, but Ryan Sensor comes up with a nice reception. Rosano just put, putting it out there. At six foot two, 190 pounds, the junior got up and really made a nice one-handed ca catch. Ryan, talk to me about the, the sales players as they check the play on their wrist that, uh, when they come to the line of scrimmage. Does that do more to the defense than the offense? No, I, I don't think so. I think it just, uh, for, first and foremost, as you watch Rosano calling his own number and getting close to another first down, as you watch him go ahead and and look at his wristband. What he's doing is he's making sure that uh, everyone understands which play he's going to call first and foremost. But, you know, for a defense, they don't really mind. You know, the defense just say, if it's going to give you a couple extra seconds to adjust to what the offense is doing, that's fine. Over 100 yards for Dino Rosano running the football, but the passing game has struggled a bit. Just 71 yards through the air today for DeSales. Mentor Lake Catholic has had the advantage in that category. Over 200 yards passing today for Petrozello. 
This is Gurgley wrapped up and thrown down. Mike Gibbons, and again comes out of the back with the football. Earlier in the game, they gave him a fumble recovery that time, though, the play blown dead. You see him, though, look at him play football. I mean, this guy is a pure high school football player with so much enthusiasm, so much excitement. Coach Lombardo said before the game, if you could bottle that kind of excitement and enthusiasm and love for the game of football and inject it into every single one of your players, you'd win every single ball game that you'd ever play. That's what kind of a football player uh, you're talking about when you're talking about Mike Gibbons, the captain of this football team. He also plays a little fullback and you know, he's just done everything for this football team. Big reason why they're here today. The carry by Gurley, though, good enough for a first down. And again, it's Gurley into Metro Lake Catholic territory and close to another to sales first down. Just ran right over Ray Catania in the backfield that time. Catania, I don't think he's going to understand what happened there. He's like, what, what? Did somebody get the number to that truck that just ran me over? That was Tyler Gurgley, number 39. Just lowers the shoulder and picks up some old school yardage there. That's right. And uh, DeSales starting to feel a little bit, starting to get confident. And, uh, you know, Coach Jacoby, just before the start of this quarter, was in the huddle really talking to this offense, trying to get them all pumped up. And pumped up they are because the offensive line just making a surge forward right there and Gurgley again. 16th carry of the day for Tyler Gurgley. And another first down for Columbus DeSales out to the 41-yard line. Better late Catholic. After that first period where DeSales got its two touchdowns, has taken charge in the yardage category. They've done it all through the air, too. 230 yards through the air. They've really settled down and did a good job throwing the football. DeSales now, they've the last two drives they've put together, they've been confident, and we'll see if they can continue this confidence. Rosano pulls it away, takes it back, and is on the move inside the 30, and another first down for DeSales to the 25-yard line. You know, just when you think, Late Catholic's got the triple option figured out, and that steady dose of gurgly kind of lulls you to sleep. And then here's Rosano's going to pull it out, and then he's going to find his own little seam. And it's not just a seam here. He makes some guys miss. He runs through a few tackles, keeps his feet, and always falls forward to pick up positive yardage. You don't go ahead and rush over 1,000 yards as a quarterback during the course of the season without keeping your feet and being an athlete. Again, it's Gurgley inside. That's such a quick hitter. You know, the, the defense, really, before they even know it, uh, Gurgley's passed on. And inside the 25 to the 21-yard line, and the sales going without a huddle right now. Coming up, 11th play of this drive for Columbus DeSales. Yeah, they started on their 17, and here they are in the red zone now. And Rosano's checking his plays. 8.50 left in the game, tied at 14. Rosano turns it up and has some running. Nice cutback move inside the 10, dives to the 5. Like I said before, he keeps his feet. He makes people miss. He's got some jukes and jives. I mean, he's... He's a, he's a pretty good football player. I mean, like we talked about before, he's thrown for over 1,000, rushed for over 1,000, 6'2", 190 pound, and he's only a junior. He understands how to run this triple option well. He keeps it here, keeps his feet, kind of cuts back to the inside, and falls forward for that positive yardage that we always talk about that's so crucial, especially when you're trying to win a state championship. 137 yards today. 11th play of the drive upcoming, in which they've converted five first downs. First and goal at the Better Lake Catholic Five. Inside handoff to Gurgley as he gets to the three-yard line. Well, you see, big. You know what? It's it's not tough to pick up positive yardage when you're following big number 63, Andy Wills. You saw him there coming around, six foot three, 280 pounds senior on that offensive line, and he just kind of pushed a couple of Better Lake Catholic Cougars around and and really allowed Gurgley to pick up some positive yards there on that play. No one better to follow than the first team Division Three All-Ohio performer, Andy Wills. Second and goal from the Better Lake Catholic Three. This is Rosano, touchdown to Sales. Again, Rosano just doing such a good job of not only riding the fullback in, but having the presence of mind to pull the ball back out. And you see right here that the Sales Salians not only did they get the, the swagger back, but putting up these points, striking first in the fourth quarter, is awfully huge. That was a championship caliber drive right there. Championship caliber drive, definitely. And really, it was it was led by not only that man, but the quarterback, Dino Rosano. He's only a junior, but he's done a good job 
with all the rest of these seniors on this football team. They have got five seniors and six juniors that start on this offense. And uh, right now, as the junior, they got it done, put in the end zone. Extra point attempt. Snap a bit high, but the kick is up. And the kick is good. 7.36 remains in the Division Three state championship game. Dino Rosano puts his Columbus to sale. Stallions ahead by a touchdown. You see him here. Pulls the ball out, and again, he's been cutting back against the grain all day. The last three times that he's gone ahead and, and pulled the ball out of the uh, fullback stomach and kept it, watch him here. Every single time these, this last drive, he cut back in and picked up positive yardage. This time, he only had to pick up three yards for a touchdown. Let's see what Metro Lake Catholic has offensively when they come back on the field. The impressive scoring drive by DeSales. Yeah, and you look at it, 11 of those plays were rushing plays for 67 yards. Only one pass play for 16 yards. And uh, really, the most important stat probably on there, they chomped up over five minutes off of the clock. And now that defense is nice and well rested. They can go out there and try to go ahead and shut down what the Cougars have started to do. And that's put points on the board here in the second half. Or did they? <laughs> well, there you go. That's <laughs> something I think will be talked about for a while, depending on the outcome of this one. Lead at a touchdown for DeSales. Their first score since the first period when they jumped out on top 14 to nothing. But Narek to kick it away. Now, how often do they kick it like that? Is what I want to know, Mike. <laughs> Well, they've ran out of that formation on every kick attempt today. And here's Benera to kick it. It will pound out of bounds. And Bender Lake Catholic trailing 21 to 14. 736 remains in the Division III state championship game here at Paul Brown Tiger Stadium in Maslin, Ohio. Marty Bannister, Ryan Miller, our entire Ohio News Network crew. So pleased you're with us here for this state championship game with Columbus to Sales just taking the advantage of 21 to 14. To guy by the name of Watson. If it's not him, it's his partner in crime, Matucci. So third down and 11. Better Lake Catholic has just one timeout remaining. And here's Petras a little throw now. Being chased. Still on the go. He just shovels it ahead. The ball is caught. And knocked down a short game. <laughs> How about Gibbons? Almost the discus type throw right there by <laughs> Petrozillo. Petrozillo. <laughs> <laughs> He's just trying to avoid the sack here, honestly. He's throwing it up for grabs, and Gibbons makes the finger, uh, kind of the shoestring catch. But you know what? They had Watson covered up. They almost threw him into a one-man route, and then Petrozilla, you see there, kind of throwing it up. Gibbons in the right place at the right time. That'll go down the score sheet as a reception for Gibbons. And all that goes for nothing. No gain. Fourth down and 10, and Lake Catholic will play. Score time, upper left of your screen. Big play coming up here. Petrus Willow again will drop the throw. Has some time. Delivers. The pass is caught, and it is a first down. You know, he Matucci plenty that time. time. Plenty of time. Matucci, we talk about him. This drive, you know, last drive it was Watson. This drive it's Matucci. These two guys, they're the dynamic duo of this Cougar football team. Matucci, you watch him here. And, and really, Petrozello has got all day long to throw the football. And uh, you find Matucci, he makes the great grab. It was Dwayne, I think it was Dwayne Penn who came up with the big stick there to stop Matucci in his tracks. Another successful fourth down conversion for Metro Lake Catholic. Keeps the drive alive. First and 10 of the 27. And here's Petrozillo to the near side, and he's thrown down. Dan Brown. Dan Brown doing a good job on the chase. And also, Dwayne Penn, you see there on your screen, he stepped up on the contain and made the big hit to force that man, the young sophomore, Mark Petrozello, to the ground. And here they are again. They lost yardage on first down. Don't forget, before this one is through today, Ryan and I will select the Grange Insurance most valuable player of this game. And we have, I think, a number of candidates to look at. A lot of guys playing some good football Absolutely. right now. Second down and 12. That play lost a couple. Back to throw again. Petruzzullo again has time. Finds a receiver. That's Brandon Savage making the catch. Heading towards the far side. Dwayne Penn runs him down close to a first down. 
I'm not sure people understand how good of a quarterback this uh, young sophomore is, has really turned out to be. And, and you know what? He's not a sophomore anymore. He's played enough games. He's, he's practically a junior. But you watch him sit back. He, lo he looks off Watson. He looks off Matucci. And then he hits Savage. And Savage goes ahead and knows what to do with it. He picks up close to a first down. Now it's third and short. Dwayne Penn again on the stop. He's been all over the field for this defense. Unfortunately, they just haven't been able to bow up and stop what the Cougars are doing offensively. Third down and one from the DeSales 18. Four minutes to go in the Division Three State Championship game. It's the toss sweep. First down and a little more for Spellbar. He gets to the 15. A pickup of about three yards. Haven't seen Spellbar in a while. You know, you, you, people forget this kid rushed for over a 1,124 yards this season, had seven touchdowns, and here all he needed was a few yards to pick up the first down. And that's big to keep the drive alive and keep moving the chains. Catholics just continue to eat up the clock, too. We got just, looks like just under 3.40 left to go in this football game. Balls at the DeSales 15-yard line. And touches to those rolling to throw. Rushes on, fires the pass, incomplete. Watson to the near side, the intended receiver that time. He was wide open, too. It's, the problem is Petrozello is going against his body, you know, going away. Rolling to the right for a sophomore is one thing. Rolling a sophomore out to your left is a completely other thing. Now he's got to throw against his body, and he just didn't quite have the touch that he did. But all day long he's had the touch. Look at him. The guy's 18 of, 12, of 24, 272 yards. I know he had the one pick, but he also threw a touchdown pass that went for 50-some-odd yards. And he's just been having a great game as far as a sophomore coming to a state championship game as a quarterback, I couldn't ask for him to be doing much more than what he's done this far. Tenth play of the drive upcoming for Better Lake Catholic. In the postseason, Petrozillo has completed 65% of his passes. Quarterback draw across the 10. If it wasn't for Ryan O'Reilly, I think Petrozillo would have picked up some more yards. But uh, O'Reilly kind of trying to defeat the blocker first and keeping a hand free and, and tripping up the young sophomore. You see him here again. Kind of a stalemate with the offensive lineman. Just got him around Just the Just got him. You know, yeah. you, you saw all the running room that Petrozilla would have had. And had Ryan O'Reilly come up with a big stop for the Stallions and, and really forcing the Cougars now into another, another tough third down situation. Third down at five at the ten. The throw. Near side. Matucci. Touchdown. Better late Catholic. Petrozello to Matucci and the score. Bertie Cahill on the coverage for the Sale Stallions. Never had a chance. Petrozillo to Matucci. They just got something working today. And I, I can't figure it out what it is, but they go over 280 yards so far through the air. And uh, the young sophomore has really played well for Coach Tom Lombardo. As much as the DeSales drive was a championship caliber drive, that's what we saw just then out of Metro Lake Catholic. Very impressive. Right back down the field. They try for the tie here. Extra point attempt is up, and it's good. 2.47 left. We are tied up at 21. You know, first and foremost, you look at the, the receiver and the quarterback are definitely on the same page. They're the only ones that knew that ball was thrown. Cahill on the coverage there, but Matucci just goes ahead and he, re he realizes that what Petrozilla was going to do, he's going to take three steps and he was going to throw it up to a point. And then Matucci just goes up and gets the football. He made a catch earlier going up and grabbing the football, and so did Mark Watson. And these two guys are a big reason why the score is now tied. 11 plays, 60 yards, 449 off of the clock, and of course capped off by that 10-yard touchdown pass from Petrozillo to Matucci. And you look at what uh, what Matucci's done thus far. What, seven receptions, 147 yards. He's averaging 21 yards per reception. Two touchdowns so far on the day. And coming into this championship game, Ryan, in the four prior playoff games, Matucci had caught 20 balls for 226 yards. And those passes coming from that man you're looking at right there, Mark Petrozello, who today is nearing 400 yards of total offense. Is that ridiculous to say that? And you know, you, you, you talked about before, both those drives, the, the sales drive to put him up by a touchdown, and then now, late Catholics drive to, to tie up the game, both championship caliber drives, you almost get, as we, as we watch the ball go through the end zone, you almost get the feeling, Marty, that whoever has the ball last 
is going to have that chance to win this football game because the confidence level on both sidelines is at an all-time high during the course of this football game. And DeSales will have it first down and 10. Looking for the hat trick, his third state championship is Bob Jacoby. He's done a great job there with the sales program. He's really did. You know, a lot of people said earlier in the season they, they lost to Moeller, and I remember it was a tough game for him, and everyone was down on, on the sales stallions. And um, some parents made some cookies and whatnot in the, in the locker room. That's when he turned into the cookie monster, kind of throwing them everywhere. <laughs> and they turned it around from that point on. Rosano, short running room, middle of the field. Pick up of two. That was one of the turning points of the season for DeSales. According to Bob Jacoby, they played very poorly against Cincinnati Bowler. And at the intermission, there were a, a table full of cookies in the locker room. And you can literally say that Jacoby tossed his cookies because that's what they did. He literally did. Threw right. cookies everywhere in that locker room. And from that point on, DeSales has been a different football team. Tom Lombardo, though, his, his club throughout the season, finishing the regular campaign at 8-2. and two. A number five seed and then really turning it up a notch in the postseason. That's right. Their defense has been the story now. And let's see if their defense with just over two minutes to go in this football game can stop what DeSales is trying to do offensively. Second down and eight. Rosano across the 25 to the 26 as we go under two minutes left in the game. So crucial to keep keep both hands on the football right now. This would be a, a terrible time to, to have a turnover. You watch it. A triple option, sometimes you never know who's going to have the football, as you saw right there. Great job by the cameraman. But Rosano kind of keeping the ball to himself and picking up some positive yardage. As we near 90 seconds left in the game, do you get the impression they're just playing it safe and smart right now as we possibly look at overtime right now? Well, I think just like their offense is, they kind of lull you to sleep, and then if they can come up with a big play, they're going to, but they're not going to do anything foolish with the football. They're going to try to do it what's made them successful, and that's running this triple option, although, you know, you don't pick up the first down here, and you've got to punt it away. Rosano brought down, and it is good enough for the first down, that just good. barely, so that will keep the drive alive as Rosano hits 150 yards on the ground today. As we near the minute mark, the sales jumped out on top, 14 to nothing. Better Lake Catholic battled back. They even it up at 14, and now we're tied at 21 with 60 seconds left in the Division III state championship game. Counter, this is Penn, trying to pounce it to the outside, and a good job by the Better Lake Catholic defense. Haven't called Penn's name too often rushing the football this afternoon. It was Mike Gibbons again coming through on the stop there uh, for, for Lake Catholic. But Mike, but Dwayne Penn, really, we haven't, we haven't seen him on the ground that often. I mean, he, he caught the one touchdown pass, but uh, look at what he's done. He's only had about five five carries for 16 yards. I mean, that's that's a shocker when you're talking about a kid that really everyone was talking about coming into the game, had over 1,000 yards, 16 touchdowns, first team all Ohio, Division three. Kind of a shock. Ray Catania, Tom Dwyer helping out on that stop a moment ago as we look at the timeout situation. Columbus to sales with two remaining. DeSales has played a double overtime game this season. They beat Covington Catholic from Kentucky 36 to 33 while Mentor Lake Catholic this season their closest game in fact they've had a couple decided by six or fewer points a win over Cuyahoga Falls Walsh Jesuit that was the team we talked about earlier they got into the playoffs at three and six they beat them by six points a seven point loss to Bedford St. Peter Chanel which is also playing in the state finals a six point win over Shark and a six point win over Akron Holman so they're have played their share of close games as well. 50 seconds left. End around. Penn trying to get back to the near side. And Better Lake Catholic had this one sniffed out. Right from the get go. And you know what? You can't fault Bob Jacoby. He's trying to get some guys. Uh, you know, maybe kind of trying to change things up a little bit to try to get some of the over pursuit from the Cougars uh, to commit, but everyone stayed at home that time. You watch the double reverse here, and Penn just kind of gets wrapped up by a slew of tacklers, and it looked like Polito was, Phil Polito was the, the big man in there. The six foot, 175 pound senior was the guy who really brought Penn to the ground. Now we're talking about third down and seven. Third down today, they were, I think they've been three for seven so far. 
third down and six upcoming with eight seconds left in regulation and we're headed towards overtime as Gurgley just the short carry up the middle and we have completed regulation in the Division Three state championship game. You couldn't have asked for anything more. The Division Three state championship game heads to overtime. Better Lake Catholic, Columbus to sales, even at 21, the extra session or sessions coming up in a moment. 21 all is the score as we head to overtime, and here's why we're going to the extra session. That's right. You look at the quarterback for Lake Catholic, and, and that's Mark Petrozilla, the sophomore, throws it up for grabs to Matt Matucci. And just like that, it's 21 all. Can't say enough for that sophomore quarterback. He's just been having a great game here this afternoon. So we go to overtime, and here's how it basically works. They just put three minutes on the clock to give both teams almost a mini halftime to go and confer with the coaching staff. There will be a coin toss, and that is so very important in an overtime situation. And then the first team on offense will get four cracks from the 20-yard line to pick up a first down or score. Now, should the team that wins the toss put the opposing team on offense first and stop them, any score then wins the game. So that's why the coin toss, Ryan, is so important right that, now. That is, that is everything right now because of the fact we've, if you're the team that's fortunate or unfortunate, whichever way the, uh, the the coin bounces, I guess you could say, and you are on offense, you have to score first. If, if you are that team, you, you can't put it up to the defense. Even though I know the Cougars pride themselves in playing great defense, if their offense is out there first, they got to try to get that ball into the end zone because you'd hate to have your defense out there, um, you, you know, just trying to, trying to, having to shut out rather than going ahead and, and, um, and really playing football making some plays right now three and outs uh, you look at the sales their defense zero zero three and outs lake three this half so uh i and, and not to mention lake's done a better job throwing the football right i think they might have a little bit of an advantage when it comes to putting the ball uh, in the end zone from the 20 yard line you're the visiting team so you get to call the toss all right we we'll only toss one ball whilst in the air i've been heading the tail that's you gonna call ahead? Yes. Here we call you ahead. That's a tail. You won the toss, Blake Catholic. Watch the defense. Blake Catholic. Oh, you. Which way you want to go, sir? No. Yes. Sir. They took. They took. They took defense. You have the ball. Which way you want to go? Okay. Lake Catholic has elected to go on defense. St. Francis de Sales will go that way. There we go. So there you have it. Tom Lombardo's team winning the toss. And for the second straight year, the Division Three state championship game goes to overtime. Last year, Canton Central Catholic posted a two-overtime win over Van Wert. The irony of that last year, Van Wert also a team that went into the playoffs at 5-5. Five and five. It's, it's truly amazing. <laughs> you know, you look at a lot of the parallels here. Let's get back to that toy co or the, toy, uh, the coin toss real quick. I know when we talked about it, you said you didn't want to have your defense to be the last on the field. And that's why Lake Catholic, they, they won the coin toss and they said, you know what, we want our defense out there first because if the defense, let's say the defense gives up a touchdown, well, at least we have an opportunity to tie the game rather than having the defense on the field second like the sales is going to have and having them have no option. They've got to either shut them down or, or lose the football game. That's giving uh, if the team were to go ahead and score. But you look at the total yards right now in this football game. You know, Columbus DeSales Sales has done a good job, 312 yards. That's pretty good if you're talking about a state championship game. You know, but you look at what Mentor Catholic has done, and they've even won up to, as far as yardage is concerned. 405 yards, most of those coming through the air. Here we go for the first play of overtime again. The game clock is off. It is not a factor right now. First play in overtime. Rosano, a keeper, and short running room. Middle of the field that time, and the stop made Jeff Lupica in on the stop for Mentor Lake Catholic. Mike Gibbons there as well, helping out across the front. Mike Gibbons right in there, kind of wrapping up Rosano. You know, they're going to do what they've done and, and what they've been successful with all afternoon, and that's the triple option. And I know sometimes it doesn't look pretty, which that play didn't look that pretty, but they've had success running this this type of a style of offense, and you're going to see it probably on the you know on the ensuing plays here. And the sales will be forced to call a timeout in the overtime. And again, facing a second down and nine. And again, in the overtime, each team picks up an additional timeout. 
Well, this is crucial. When your offense, you know, I, after they uh, tossed the coin and you looked in, in Lake One and they said, you know what, we're going to put our defense out there on the field. I looked over and Coach Jacoby was kind of, oh, man, I, you know, they, they, you want your defense out there first because it's an emotional thing. Being being in an overtime game is, is an emotion. and Playing defense is an emotional uh, type of a game. And, and having your defense there out there first is really truly what you want. Catholics got, got their defense playing good football right now. It's second down for DeSales. They know there's such a sense of urgency to get into this end zone because they know as an offense, when you've got the ball first in overtime and you don't score, you might not see the ball again. This is a game so good, you'd want to see it again. And you know what? You'll get a chance to do that. Midnight tonight, Better Lake Catholic at Columbus St. Francis DeSales. The replay of this exciting Division Three state championship game. You're going to watch it again tonight on the Ohio News Network. Second play of overtime. Second down and nine to Sales. Rosanna wants to throw. Flushed out of the pocket and is dropped shy of the 15-yard line. Again, it looks like they were trying to set up that play that's been their favorite one of the day, Ryan. That little dump over the middle. A little dump over the middle. They had Penn in, in, the, in one of the routes. They had, uh, I think, Sensor was out there in the route. Unfortunately, there was four receivers out for DeSales, and there was four blankets thrown on them by the late Catholic defense. Cougars were all over the field there. They, were, they weren't fooling anybody, and that's surprising because DeSales hasn't thrown the ball often so far this game. Third down and six upcoming now for DeSales. The ball's at the 16-yard line. We are in overtime. Look at what Rosano's done so far. 21 times he's carried the football for 154 yards and a touchdown, so they've had success when he runs the football. And now a timeout is called, or did we have a delay of game? Delay of game is the call against DeSales. Well, you know, it's, it's four down territory to say the least. And, uh, you know, getting a delay a game obviously doesn't doesn't help you. But, uh, you know, you still, this is two down territory to try to get something going here. Unless you're thinking field goal, because this pushes you back five more yards. John Benerick has done a lot of the field goal kicking this year for the sales. And now they face a third down and 11. Back at the 21, Rosanna wants to throw. Drops it towards the end zone. Ball is airborne and it is intercepted in the end zone. It is intercepted in the end zone. The officials are gonna come together now and did he have determine, did he have a possession? Let's see. Tom Dwyer was back on coverage. And it is an interception. It is ruled an interception. Mark Watson. And he's done it on offense, and sure enough, he goes ahead and does it on defense. He comes up with the biggest play of the game so far. An interception in the end zone in overtime is huge. You see him there. He really goes up. He looks like he's a wide receiver, that's though. Right. And you know what? He is. That's, that's <laughs> why he looks so uh, so good going up to get that, that ball. Watch it again as there was pressure put on. And Watson... Well, I talked about it before. You, you know, you yep. talk about it before, the, the defensive backs for Catholic, you know, putting blankets all over the, the, the wide receivers for DeSales, and sure enough, they did it again. Now the offense has, has their turn. They've got to get back out here and try to get something going. Tom Dwyer among those putting pressure on the DeSales quarterback, and Mark Watts with the big play. Any score wins the state championship now for Bender Lake Catholic. Their first possession of overtime. Petrozulo to throw. Has a receiver, Matucci, has dropped right away. Nice tackle, Angelo Q on Q. Makes the stop inside the 15 at the 12. Still a huge chunk right there of yardage. They're going to be inside the 10, and it looks like it's first and goal from about the 8-yard line. But watch, the sophomore steps back, cool, calm, throws to Matucci, who had a couple of huge receptions, like you said, on that uh, the scoring drive to tie the football game to send it into overtime. And here he is, sure-handed, makes the reception. Now let's see what they can do as they get close to the goal line. First and goal, big stop by Angelo Cua. And here's Petru Zola on the handoff. Belvoir inside the five. The offensive line now for Minter Lake Catholic can smell the end zone. That's how close they are. They can sense it. They've got to go ahead and, and knock DeSales off the, off the ball and move closer to that goal line. It's only second down. They've got a few downs to work with, but you know each one of these plays is so important. If you're DeSales, you're scrapping your claw and you're trying to get a hold of that football. Maybe you get a turnover. Who knows? But right now, definitely field goal territory. If you're Lake Catholic, you don't turn the football over. Second and goal from the four. Bob Jacoby nervously looking on. Belbar 
get around the line of scrimmage. Managed to sprint free for about a yard, maybe two. Dan Brown, who's had a big day at that linebacker spot for Columbus to sales. Sure has. You watch him here. Svelbar is going to get the handoff, and right as he gets the handoff, here comes a blow of 37 into the screen. He's going to bring him down. So the ball placed just inside the three. There's a nervous uh, place kicker on the sidelines. <laughs> Some of the mindset here, do you perhaps maybe try a field goal here, or do you take one more shot at it? And Coach is screaming for a timeout, time but nobody can see him right now. <laughs> That's it's unfortunate. Zulo. Hands him. off to his belt bar, and tries to push towards the end zone. Dives in, and he gets it again. The Federal Catholic has won the state championship. Dan Belbar just kept pushing the pile, and pushes Federal Catholic to the state championship. And it wasn't just Belbar. championship belongs to Bender Lake Catholic. They wanted a timeout to think about it. Perhaps it's better to not think about it. You're absolutely right. Tom Lombardo, third year as head coach of this Mentor Lake Catholic Cougar football team, and he's just won his first state championship for the school. Congratulations to them. They've now won three state championships in uh, Lake Catholic history. And this one couldn't be sweeter for the senior class who's done it all season long. I know on uh, defense, and they've really done a great job. But here you see Coach. Coach is frantic. He wanted this timeout so bad. Nobody's looking over at him. He's going nuts. He takes the cap off. He's waving it around. And what, is, what, what does Spellbar do? Well, he's going to follow the big offensive line for Lake Catholic, and he gets across the goal line, and there it is. And moments after that play, Lombardo was jumping up and down, but for a different reason. Jumping for joy. Celebrating the state championship. Look at, the, Look at the effort. Big Gibbons <laughs> pushing him over, too. Mike Gibbons. They ought to give him a few points for that touchdown. <laughs> Tom Lombardo, a state championship for a mentor, Lake Catholic, and in dramatic fashion, the Division Three state championship game in overtime. The state champions in Division Three, the Cougars of Mentor Lake Catholic, who win it in OT 27-21 over Columbus to Sales.